Oh, 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 it is a chilly morning here in Australia. I can tell you I am freezing my little proverbial uh, gonads off. Now, mm, why am I here so early on a winter's morning in Australia when I should be in bed all cuddled up and wrestling with my trouser snake? Uh, uh sleeping in? <laughs> well, it's because it's the Fokker Your River Counters Fokker, I will hide your Fokker group build. And um, this is this is something to do with my Facebook page. And um, we've got a group where you've got to basically do something that hides. So it's going to be, you know, submarine hides underneath the water. A tank can hide in camouflage or, or netting. A stealth plane can hide. A spaceship can, um, can basically hide in a cloak or inside an asteroid or something. And these are the themes. We always come up with really interesting themes. Anyhow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to review what's going to be my build, which is this lovely Revell. Um, Type 7 C Flash 41 Atlantic version U boat. Now, this is a terrific kit. And, um, oh, hang on. We're always having lighting problems in my videos. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know, I don't know what's going on. No, we're always having these problems. You can just edit that bit out, all right? Now, um, for the few that are left watching, because we, we lose people every time I'm selling, we lost six in the last video. Yes, I did like my banjo playing. Yeah, like I'm going to lose any sleep. Anyhow, um, enough of that. No banjo playing in this video. You're spared. Take your cotton wool out. You're fine. Now, um, this kit, it's its terrific. It's really a lovely kit. I've been trying to get hold of it for a while. I'm pretty enthusiastic about building it uh, from all the great um, great reports and reviews I've seen. And um, couldn't get one in Australia. Couldn't get it for a lot of money. Looked and looked and looked. Now, eventually, I found two. One in um, Canada and one in the UK. And UK is only sort of... Slightly close or maybe not. But anyhow, I usually get stuff out of the UK pretty fast. And with Brexit, exchange rates have been good. So I bought one out of the UK, paid about four shekels for it. Shekel conversion chart. So um, that was pretty good. Landed and, you know, delivery. Basically, I said free delivery was built in the price. But anyhow, that was basically the same price, if not cheaper, than what I could have bought it for in Australia when they were available. Having said that, since I've done all the thing and waited a couple of weeks for it to arrive, because they come pretty quick from the UK, I must say, that, um, that Royal Mail Speedy. Anyhow, um, since it's arrived, well, Hobby Loot Japan's got them and there's a few others popped up, one in Germany and a few in the States. So they're around if you, if you want to um, source this kit, and I highly recommend it. If you, if you like submarines, this is a very nice Type 7 and it's a really good size. Anyhow, well, without further ado, because I've, I've waffled on enough and, and there's been some complaints about waffling, don't care. It's my video. It's my channel. I'll waffle as much. As... In fact, let's just talk. No, no. Um, tell you what, I'll um, stay rugged up because it's only just crept out of um, single digits. And um, I will suffer the cold to bring you a review about this Revell Type 7 U-boat. Alrighty, so what do you get for your shekels? Well, it's a very big box. It's, it's even too big to get on camera. But um, the boat's smaller. <laughs> it's it's about three quarters of the size of the box, so they uh, they kind of made it look really huge. But um, still a good size. I mean, that's still a fair size. Um, let me get my centimetre of the thing out and just double check. Um, 22 and it's 44 centimetres. And they quote it as 46.7. Well, maybe there's some bits that hang out. But anyhow, let's, um, let's have a look. Um, I've already sort of had a bit of a poke around in here. I, um, when I got it, the... Uh, Hull halves were in the same bag as all the rest, although um, the rest was bagged separately. So um, the hull is gorgeous, it really is. Let's see if we can um, get some fine detail there. So you might be able to see there, it is so crisp. I mean, this isn't like some of those cheap old Rebel kits you get where everything is just soft and miserable. Look, there are beautiful, fine. Um, the raised metal lines, but that'll probably work nicely given it a wash. But then all the, um, of course, all the little little holes there, which which um, I imagine let the water out as it goes up and down and all that sort of thing. Um, they're all nicely, nicely moulded. They're very good. Now, I wonder if it's even worth trying to draw all those out. It really, um, just put a little black wash in there and they'll look fine because it's a lot of work to draw those out and they're not just like portholes where you can use a... Um, your drill bit and you make a circle well you're gonna have to do two and then cut I, I think I'd be there for a month of Sundays and I know some people have done that and that's terrific if you can but um, I'm not gonna bother because I honestly don't care those are rivets look at them 
all individual rivets. That is beautifully molded. I mean, there's no complaints there. This is a Revell of Germany at its best. This is a lovely kit. And this is um, 2009, supposedly, but I think the sprues are marked a bit earlier. We'll get to that in a sec. I don't think I'm going to say on the inside. Oh, yes, here we go. There's a bit of blurb here. Um, Revell, Germany, but 2006. So this is actually 2006, but I think this kit was released 2009, but I'll, I'll double check all that. But look, uh, you can't complain about the detail. That is just beautiful, you know. There's not much that's better than that out in the market, honestly, that I have seen, right, with my feeble old wombat eyes. Anyhow, let's move on. This is the other bag that was in that big bag, and um, all the rest of the sprues, there's only a few. The, uh, the other two sprues are here. So let's, um, let's, let's look at those one by one. Now, um, this is basically just your stand. Um, these are some separators to um, form us for the hull, or if you like, you know, um, they, would, they would represent um, watertight walls, that sort of thing. Yes, probably, who knows? Is there things inside the hull, you know? If you're asking me to do a review, what the frick would I know what I know? It's my first submarine. Anyhow, those things go inside the hull and they make it a lot stronger and all the rest of it. So you've got props, um, tiny bit of flash on the props. First bit of flash I've seen. So yeah, tiniest bit on those props. Really, hardly anything to write home about. But you know, this is about the only thing I can fault so far. The um, the kit's really clean. So looking at things like um, those periscopes there, there's there's a tiny bit of flash on there, but that will come off so easily. It really will. There's um, there's not much to worry about there. They they're not hugely so, and those are fine parts. So um, but then you move on to um, other things, whoop, don't bump the bleeding iPad, Harry. Um, you know, this part here, lovely and crisp, really good. And, and over here, you've got um, the anchor. Really should have thought through this bloody iPad stand before I started doing close ups. Um, the anchor, lovely, and cut points are good. And um, you've got some, I call them yard arms, but they're probably not, it's probably something else. Again, fairly good, tiny bits of flash, but nothing outrageous. Everything else is beautifully crisp and clear. Which is not bad for a uh, for a kit that's over ten years old. Now I don't know if this sprue is dated. No, it's um, I can't see it for the moment. But um, I think the other one is. Let's let's move on to the other sprue. Moving on to the second sprue, which um, is a good size. This one, and we really start to see some of the detail pop. We've got the um, basically the decks in three pieces. Um, we've got the um, the conning tower, which is in various pieces, and the little decks that go in there. Various bits and bobs and pieces which we'll see in the instructions shortly So I won't try and embarrass myself for trying to say what they are because I haven't got a friend glue first submarine ever uh, Now the one disappointment are the um, the rails even at 1 to 1 44th scale Apparently they're still just a little bit fat So um, not a biggie not a biggie at all. You still could build it if you're not worried about that, you know you're not worried at all, you could just clean those up and then they're not too bad, there's a little bit of gunk on them. But really, there's not going to take much to clean those up. But um, yeah, they are a bit chunky, they're a bit chunky monkey there. So they will be easy replaced, I'm hoping, with pins and wire of the correct scale. So I'll basically put some pins in for all my uprights and then I'll run some wire along, see how I glue it together. Might work, could be a total disaster, we may end up in tears, who knows. Let's look at some other things here. Um, these are obviously machine guns. And they are crisply moulded. No issue at all there. There's, there's nothing. There's no problem. I can't see any flash or anything on them there. They look fine. Just cut them out, whack them on. Not a problem at all. Some more rails. Um, some more parts. As I said, there's lots of bits and pieces. I think this goes at the back here, which supports the um, the, the trailing um, um, line from Conning Tower, which, which could be a, an aerial for the um, radio. Don't know. We'll find out. But it has a big long line. Maybe that's what they hang their washing on, you know, when basically they, they finally been submerged all that time and they're probably all a bit smelly and horrible. They get up, you know, they get the ruddy fresh air in, pump the diesel fuels out and the little submariner in us, yeah, they, they wash all their socks and hang them on the line. I don't know. You tell me. Do you know anything about submarines? I don't. Obvious, isn't it? Um, beautifully modelled, a little deck moulding in there. I mean, there's, you can buy a wood deck for this kit, but why would you bother? For a start, you're going to paint it grey. I mean, it's... Very rare that any of the German U-boats had a um, you know yellowish 
wood deck. They um, usually all painted camouflage colours and um, desired to hide, which is the premise of our group build. It's hide your fucker. So, um, oh, look, there's time apart here. Look at the detail moulding on that. Look at that. It's lovely. And looking at the, um, the decks, again, beautifully crystal clear. I mean, look, that's going to take a wash wonderfully. There's no issue at all with that. I uh, don't have any complaints with that at all. This is a lovely kit. I, as I said, I'm hoping to build it pretty well out of the box. That was the idea. I've um, I spent ages putting PA and barrels and this and that and faffing around and on wood decks and everything on other ships. Well, this is a boat technically, but you know what I mean. My other naval um, stuff. And it would be just a walk and relief to build something pretty well out of the box, which I will do with this. And as I say, I've still got mojo when I put it all together, which from what I hear, everyone else says this is a beautiful build. It just clicks together. So assuming that all is true and no one's lied to me, then I might have the mojo to tackle those rails, which is all it's going to need. Now, a quick look at the instructions. I won't go into too much detail because, as I said, I don't really know much about, um, about submarines. So I've done a little bit of research, you know, enough not to embarrass myself completely. There's that washing line. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, let me know why they have those lines. I mean, there's no yard arms or anything to rig off. I mean, do they put their semaphore flags on there? I, I don't know. Do they hang their socks on there? Don't know. I know on the, some of the early ones they had a um, you know little cutter here for cable cutter sort of thing. Uh, but the Atlantic version and the, and the later models don't seem to have that. They just have the clean line. Um, but the um, the early ones have this big saw sort of thing here, and then another little mounting. On the front of the um, the bow there, so that they can um, you know cut into cables and through nets and all that sort of stuff. I suppose you know that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking because I don't think they actually use these for ramming, do they? Anyway, rattling on usual rebel stuff. Blah 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 blah. You know, glue it, fix it. Uh, don't don't bloody start World War Three. You know, do not submerge in your bathtub with the pedo tubes fully loaded. <sighs> um, now the annoying thing is rebel sort of gives you well they give you all the colours. Uh, it's only referencing Humbrol, I think, is it? I don't know. What are those numbers? I think they're usually Humbrol numbers. Am I right? Somebody tell me. Or well, they actually Ravel's own paint numbers. That would probably make more sense. But anyhow, they give you the um, the common name and you can pretty well figure it out. But look, it's a submarine. It's going to be grey, 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 grey with a little bit of grey. So just shades of grey. Pretty easy to figure out. Sprue map, that's nice. Um, Everything's numbered, so that's easy to go. And away we go, and they make you build a stand first. Well, I suppose so, because while you're working on it, you're going to need to prop it up. There's those two little um, two little spaces. And I think that's all they are. I don't think they try to be any kind of um, internal watertight sort of stuff. I think they're just spaces. So you're off. You put the hole together, so you start feeling like you're, you're getting somewhere straight away, which is, which is rather handy. And um, on with that lovely little piece here. I still don't know what that is. That's that really nice looking piece that I found mold in the kit. So on that goes. Um, we've got um, pointy up things. Uh, I don't know if that's a periscope. It might be. Wish they do. On Tamiya kits, they actually sometimes tell you what the parts are. They have little names. And that's kind of nice for um, new modelers or even idiots like me. I haven't got a clue what they're building. It's really nice to know what these things are. So if anyone's out there has got some submarine knowledge, and I know um, Switcher, Switcher, you know all about this stuff. Please enlighten me. I will not be embarrassed. I mean, you know, I, I don't know much about submarines. I really don't. So on goes some bits and some decks and everything like that. And um, it's pretty simple. Some some little vanes and planes here, which, which help it go up and down. You've got your um, assembly here for the, um, the, the, the props and the screws. And there they are. Little screws. On they go. Um, again, that all goes together. The little rudders, everything like that. And... Um, Ravel gives you little little clocks here all the way through. It's all about time travel, I think. I'm not quite sure. They might have a connection with Doctor Who. Don't know. Don't know. I don't know why they do that. Maybe it just tells you you can only do this one at 10 past 2. Well, they're all 10 past 2. Apparently, you can only make this kit at 10 past 2. That's a bit of a worry. Um, okay, so on goes those lovely front, front anchor and the, the front vanes, which go on there. And then finally, you've obviously got a sub-assembly here where you've made that deck, and in it goes. And there's a big... Oh, be careful here there's obviously something to worry about don't know there's some little clippy clippy thing there's a huge big exclamation mark there which which even for, for wombats like me go you better get this right and they've got sticky tape here so at this point they um they think you should tape something maybe you got to tape the deck to that yes obviously 
Got these lovely little sort of things everywhere, little pictographs, which is rather clever. So again, on with that, uh, more, more sticky tape because they're saying basically um, get the rest of the deck on, put that all together. It's all quite lovely, all quite lovely. Um, not hard, there's nothing difficult in this kit, really. And here we have periscopes and snorkels and um, there could be radio antennas. There's all kinds of things. Lots of pokey up things for this boat. Lots of them. I'll have to find out what they all are. It would be quite fascinating. I'll have to do some more research. But basically, you just paint them grey. So that's all I need to know for now. So there you go. And then you're building the top of the conning tower. This looks like one of the MG assemblies. And this is the big one. It's got um, three, three machine guns on this. One rather large one with a, um, with a shield. Um, which is, uh, I forget the calibre, I'll look that up, probably put it on the bottom of the screen here. And then um, then there's those ones that I picked out when I was looking at the sprues. It's two smaller ones which sit below. So um, if you skip forward here, you sort of get an idea. There's a, there's a really big one down on the um, lower part, lower deck of the conning tower, and you've got two there. So this is really armed up with anti-aircraft guns. That's, um, that is terrific. So it's um, it's got a lot of firepower, even when it's you know basically out of the water there, or up, you know. Not, not submerged. Anyhow, I'm, I'm waffling. I'm waffling. Bits, bits, add bits, 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 on you go. Really good. And the rails really only happen here pretty well near the end at page nine. So that's the point where I can make that decision as to do I go with the plastic rails and try and tidy them up or do I say, no, dag nab it. I could do something else. And the beauty is that's all a sub-assembly. Look at that. Whole conning tower is a sub-assembly, so I should be able to paint up all the bits separately and do a nice job of that. Same with the decks, I should be able to paint them. I think they're different colours. So depending on the colour scheme I choose. So um, da, 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 there you go, finished. And then they say, put your string on. You know, put the washing lines up. There we go. Now let's have a look at some of those, um, those paint schemes. Here's the choices you get. There'll be four of them, which is rather nice. They're all sort of various greys. Now, you've got to look up your bloody colours. I'll, I'll usually get the pencil out at this point and I'll go back to the beginning of the instructions and I'll find out what each one of these are called and I'll pencil them in there so that it's a lot easier for me to know what's going on. Similarly I'll go through instructions too wherever they mark the, um, the colours and I'll pencil them in and, and anything else too, the, any notes I need to make, anything I've noted about the construction where I think well I'll need to paint that beforehand or leave that till later. I'll do lots of little pencil notes and we'll see that when I actually start building the kit and I will video that because this is something unusual, this is something new and different. So I will make a video series on it. So basically, yeah, um, you've got um, obviously that one there is L, which I think is light grey, and then you've got B, which is, you know, sort of a very dark B colour. In fact, we have got, look at this, I have got... <laughs> I could separate. So there you go. So B is granite grey. <laughs> so you've got granite grey, you've got dust grey, you've got um, basically uh, silvers and steels and, um, and, and, and uh, basically here you've got a sky mat and a blue mat and a grey mat and, and a green silky mat and, and a black silky mat. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of greys in this. But anyhow, these are your colour schemes. I won't go into them too much detail, but you do get um, various ones for various years. This is from 1942. It's an earlier, earlier one, and you've got lighter and darker colours. That's quite a nice contrast. That's interesting. Then you've got um, you've got a very dark grey one here from 1942 um, as well. Um, so there you go. That's all very lovely. Looks like there might be a little radar thing there. So um, who knows? Who knows? And then um, then you start to get into um, to the ones with the, with the cross. So as as on the box art, there's a um, a sort of a big big golden cross there. So these ones are from um, also 1942. Everything's from 1942. Well, this one's 1943. So there you go. So anyhow, you do get um, a few options as to how you want to paint it up. But really, grey, 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 and it's very hard to tell from the um, from the drawings that the reveal give you. I mean, I really prefer things like what Hobby Boss and Trumpeter do, where they give you a, almost a full size colour drawing, and it's separate. It's on a separate thing you can lift out, and you can really see at a glance what what colour everything is. But anyhow, this just takes a matter of, um, I'll pencil in what the colour's called, and then I'll be able to reference through and check. But I think I'm going to go for one of the other ones. I'm not so keen about this gold, gold cross thing, um, probably due to my skills of trying to paint it. <laughs> I actually sort of, um, I wouldn't mind something a bit more contrasting in colours. So this one, um, although I might be an illusion because they're just the colours they've picked, the shades of grey, to give their indication. It's usually not always an indication actually of the colour. But um, 
we'll see. When I when I write in the things, I'll see which one and where you go. But it is nice to know that you've got various choices. So there you go. So I'm going to stop rabbiting on uh, now and get on and build this thing. And there'll be some progress build videos in the week. So we'll actually have some videos of me doing something for change. <laughs> All right, that's it for now. So it's goodbye from Australia and it's hooroo from Harry Houdini.